When I started to develop parachute systems a long time ago, I started by trying to just use aerodynamic forces to get the parachute out. This didn't work, and after a while, I decided to switch to electronic systems. I knew the heart of these would be a servo motor like this one, which could hold the door closed and then move out of the way to let it open, but these servos needed some way to be controlled. For starters, I used an RC receiver like this one. These are controlled by a remote on the ground, which lets somebody on the ground just decide when to open the parachute bay. This worked pretty good, but had issues. Human reaction time is pretty bad, and you can't really see super well. Plus, it's just annoying to have to control a remote and bring a remote to the launch site. The precise timing needed for, say, stage separation right at burnout would require a flight computer. To start, I got this rocket flight computer. It's very small, as you can see and it can control servos by default. You can set the deployments to different times and it worked really well. This flight computer records data such as altitude and acceleration and is pretty good overall. However, when I started to try to run two servos for multi-stage flights, the flight computer burned up. I don't know what happened still, but it seemed like something happened that caused a short circuit or something and it just let out the magic smoke and died. I bought a second one to try to fix the issue, but as soon as I plugged in even one servo, it did the exact same thing. I really don't know what the problem was. More recently, I got this. This is the Starlight flight computer, and although it doesn't have servo outputs for parachute deployment by default, it's a lot more capable. Unlike the rocket flight computer, as well as altitude and vertical acceleration, it logs acceleration on both forward and side-to-side -side axes, as well as three-axis gyroscope values. Writing the code for this turned out to be way more of a pain than I expected. I kind of thought at first that I would be able to just add some servo code into the default software and have it deploy the servos when I wanted it to, but this didn't really work. There was a bunch of annoying bugs. The creator of this included all of the functions needed to interact with the sensors at a lower level, which made it pretty easy to write the main file so that it could do exactly what I wanted, which was really nice and probably what I should have done from the beginning. Once I got that done, I was ready to fly it. In the last video, you saw the first test flights. If you remember, only one of those flights really worked. The second one didn't deploy the servo. At the time, I was pretty sure that this was because the flight computer didn't detect launch, so I changed some stuff. Instead of using the accelerometer values or the altimeter to detect when we launched, what I did was install a brake wire. What this is is a wire that grounds one of the pins on the flight computer, and when the flight computer detects that that pin is no longer grounded, it can say, oh, we launched, and start data logging. Once that was all done, I started ground testing. It worked pretty well on the bench and seemed to detect launch reliably and record data how I wanted it to. However, when I took it out to the garage to do a wet dress rehearsal, it would not detect launch a bunch of times. And it seemed like as long as it wasn't powered on for very long, it would detect launch. But then if you left it on for longer, it would fail to detect launch. After a bunch of ground testing, what I realized was happening was after a certain amount of time, kind of just randomly, the IMU, what measures the accelerometer and gyroscope values, would just return an error, which would cause everything to freeze up and it wouldn't work. This was really annoying, but turned out to be a pretty easy fix. The code for this computer is written in MicroPython, which has a built-in error handling feature called try and accept. So you try to run a block of code, and if it gives you a certain error, you can do something about it. In my case, I just logged to the data logging file that we had an error and moved on. With the IMU problem solved, we were able to go out and fly. I'm going to show all four flights at once because they're all very successful. The parachutes came out really nice, and the flight computer seemed to work very well. The flight computer needed to move this this servo here in order to test that it worked and so as a fun little payload I added a fish with a little streamer on it. We'll see if it works.
those flights were very successful and when I reviewed the onboard footage I could see very clearly that the flight computer had worked pretty much perfectly. The servo seemed to move when I wanted it to on every flight and it detected launch which was great. However, when I looked at the flight data, there was only one data log file. This was very sad. When I looked through the code though, I realized what my problem had been. The way it works, it wasn't saving a certain file and so it was just overwriting the data every time. Because of how the flight computer shuts down, when it was plugged into the laptop, this error didn't come up, so I didn't catch it before I went and flew it. This means even though we'd flown this thing six times now, we only had two flights of data. However, because of the servo movement in the onboard footage, I was confident enough to give it primary control of the parachute. If you remember from the last video, in these early flights, I had the receiver in primary control of the parachutes with the flight computer flying as a largely passive payload. Now I felt confident enough to give it control of the parachute, so I set it all up again with no receiver on board and headed back out to the launch site once again. That flight was pretty bad. The reason the parachute didn't come out was probably just bad packing, honestly. It probably just got tangled. Though it's honestly probably a good thing. It came out so early in the flight. This is because the flight computer detected Apogee almost right away. Four clock cycles after detecting launch, it detected Apogee for some reason and decided to throw the parachute out. I'm still really not sure why this happened. For the future, I'm probably just going to let it detect launch with the brake wire and then trigger events on a timer. You can run simulations to figure out when things need to happen and then just have it move servos a certain amount of time after launch. We also tried one more cool experiment when we were out flying. My brother brought a DSLR camera which takes really nice photos and he took burst photos of all the launches which means it takes a bunch of photos really fast. So we got a lot of really cool photos, which I'll show you while I talk about what I'm going to do next. I'm probably not going to do a lot of videos in the next couple months because I'm working on a really big project that I want to do as one big series. I'll have some smaller videos of like ground tests and maybe some parachute tests, but most of the big flying tests will be in that series, which will probably be a couple months because I got a lot of work to do on that. But it's a very, there's a very exciting, very big project coming up. I won't say too much, but um, altitudes higher than probably a thousand feet and probably over 200 miles an hour. So that'll be pretty exciting and I'll see you around.